All right, we're uh, looking in 2 Corinthians this evening, continuing through the book, and uh, we've, been, we've come to chapters 8 and 9, which are basically about giving, and uh, that's, that's a good thing. In chapter 8, we looked at some of the principles of giving. Uh, we saw that uh, we give in spite of circumstances. Uh, you know, we need to give regularly and, and uh, just give, give from our heart. It talked about how they gave enthusiastically. You know, even these poor churches, uh, they gave beyond their power. And they, they asked Paul, now, can't we be a part of this? <laughs> uh, they were excited about it. Uh, we give like Jesus gave. You know, first, we give ourselves. Uh, we give in love. We give sacrificially. Uh, verse 12 talks about giving willingly. For if there be first a willing mind, we just need to have a heart and mind that, that wants to give. Then we give by, by faith, give through our local church, we give proportionately. You know, God's not just looking at the amount, He's looking at the, the commitment, really. And, uh, you know, if we don't have much, it's like the, the widow's might. She gave, gave all. I heard a story about, uh, you know, sorry to pick on Scottish people, but you know, they have a reputation of being, being stingy. And a rich, wealthy Scottish man, they were taking an offering, special offering, and Oh, uh, he said, oh, I'm just going to give the widow's might. And uh, one of the men jumped up and said, praise God, he's going to give it all. <laughs> he meant he's going to give a little bit, <laughs> but uh, she gave it all. And uh, the, uh, the principles of giving are something that we can, we can learn, like most things, by looking at Jesus and uh, seeing how he gave. Well, chapter 9 talks about the promises of giving, uh, some real blessings. And uh, let me read chapter 9 the first five verses. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready." Lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had notice before, that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not of covetousness. And he's talking about a special offering, and they had said they wanted to participate, and, and uh, so he's, he's sending some men to... Uh, make sure that they're, they're ready and uh, to be a, be a part of that offering. Well, some of the, the principles that we see here, uh, the first one you, you see is that giving brings blessings to others. Uh, verse, uh, verse 1, he talks about uh, the, the gift, the ministering to the saints. You know, when we give, it, it's a ministry. It helps people. Later on in, in verse 11, he uses the, the two words, through us. You know, through us. It causes others to have thanksgiving to God. And it's great to, to be a blessing to someone in, in how we give. But it's also a blessing to others in the example. And when someone is generous, uh, that's an example. In, in verse 2, it, it uses the word at the end there, your zeal hath provoked very many. This is a good kind of provoking. Uh, this is the kind of provoking uh, to good things. Um, there's a verse in Proverbs where it says, iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Uh, that's the kind of thing this, this is talking about. You know, by what we do, others say, oh, if they can do it, I can, I can do that too. And uh, be generous. And he talks about how it's, it's a blessing. The blessing has to be in reality. Uh, it, it's not enough to promise. You know, back in chapter 8, verse 11, he'd said, now therefore perform the doing of it. <laughs> they'd talked about it. They had a heart for it. He says, now is the time to, to put the reality to it. And, you know, sometimes in life, it, it's, I don't know if you've had it happen, where you've thought about something, you've talked about something, and, and you kind of forget that you haven't actually done it yet. <laughs> you know, sometimes you think, oh, I thought I'd done that. Uh, and uh, there needs to be a reality for it to, to be the blessing. It's not enough to talk about giving. In fact, there's a, verse in, a couple of verses in James where he says exactly that. Uh, you've heard the verses. He says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace and be warmed and filled, 
Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? <laughs> and he's saying it's not enough to, to think about it or, or talk about it. Uh, there's the actual doing of it. And God, God blesses others through our, our giving. You know, as I thought about this, I, I wondered, uh, have you ever been blessed by someone's giving? Has is, is any, any of you ever been blessed by someone else's giving? Tell you what, we sure have. You know, there's been times when people have met a need, and sometimes they knew we had a need, sometimes they didn't. And just the uh, Lord laid it on our heart to do this or whatever. And, and man, uh, it's such a blessing when, uh, when uh, someone gives and it, it helps. Uh, giving is a, a blessing to others. But you know, some of the main principles that you see here in, in this chapter are about the fact that giving will bring blessing to you when you give. Uh, let's, let's look at some of the verses, but let, let me give you a couple of other verses first. Uh, one is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. A very familiar verse to uh, people who uh, have studied giving in the Bible. Give and it shall be given unto you. And then he describes that giving to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You know, as we give, the same measure. Uh, another verse in uh, Galatians chapter 6 and, and verse 7. Again, a very, very familiar verse. Galatians 6 and verse 7, he says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We reap the same kind of things that we sow. And when we apply that to giving, uh, verse 6 of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 there, you have the principle of increase. You just kind of give, give titles to some of these, whether they're uh, official titles or not. Verse 6, he says, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Makes sense, doesn't it? You know, if the farmer planted one seed, he wouldn't have much of a crop, would he? <laughs> yeah, you see those farmers, man, they, you see the old ones, so they just pull it out of a bag and throw it. You know, the seeds are going everywhere. Uh, that's the principle of, of increase. Uh, like, like we read in, in Luke chapter 6, uh, you know, as you give, it's going gonna, it's gonna to increase. And we, we need to remember this, this principle. And when, when you're tempted to forget this principle, remember the Lord. You know, God gave. God gave His Son, and He gained many sons. <laughs> now, what a blessing that is. In uh, Romans 8, 32, He says this, He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? God doesn't just give us a little. He gives us the best, and He keeps on giving. The principle of increase. There's a lot of verses on finances and giving in Proverbs. Uh, for instance, Proverbs 11 and uh, verse 24, he says, There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. You know, with this principle of increase, it, it's not how much you hold on to, it's how much you invest, how much you plant that, that makes the difference. And he says there's going to be those who are going to hold on to what they have and they're going to lead them to poverty. He says there's going to be others that scatter and, and see increase. Now, the principle of increase is a great one. Also, verse 7, the principle of intent. Chapter 9, verse 7, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. Yet God sees our heart as we give. And he promises to bless. Now, we have to actually give, but uh, you know, the, the Lord knows when we're giving cheerfully. He, he gives a couple of instructions there. He says, not grudgingly or of necessity. Now, as I understand that, grudgingly is out of sorrow. We're giving, but we, we don't really want to give. <laughs> necessity is, it's not so bad. It's when you see a need. But be careful. You don't want to just give to meet needs. You want to give to, to please the Lord. Now, giving to please the Lord, you'll, you'll often be giving to meet needs. But the need is not the primary focus. 
the primary focus is, is your heart, the principle in, of intent. Um, I think it's an illustration of it when you think of David who couldn't build the temple and yet God saw it was in his heart and he, you know, he got all the things together so that Solomon could build the temple. <laughs> and God, God, in a sense, gave him credit because it was in his heart and he prepared himself to do that. Uh, a couple of verses from Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. You know, as we honor the Lord, we'll honor Him with our substance. And uh, God will, will bless. He wants to bless us. Proverbs eleven twenty five. I used to have this written in one, uh, front of one of my Bibles. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. You know, we need to be generous. We need to be giving. Now, that needs to be our, our heart. God sees our heart, the principle of intent. Uh, verse 8, the principle of immediacy. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Now, what God is basically saying there is that as you give, God will make sure you have what you need when you need it. Now, if you've lived very long as a Christian, you know that uh, you don't always have more than what you need. You don't always have what you're going to need. But God says He'll look after you. Uh, Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all, all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we need to cooperate with Him in this. He talks there, there's some great words there in verse 8. All grace abound toward you. All sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Uh, later on in verse 11, he says, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness. You know, to catch hold of this truth, what we're talking about here is, is that you're banking on God. Yeah, I, I say this a lot of times in a lot of different ways, uh, but it's true. You know, we're not... It's not our job that supports us. Now, if you've got a job, do a good job. Be a good worker. You should be the best worker there. But that's not what our faith is in. Uh, it's not our health that sustains us. It's not the country that sustains us. Uh, you know, you read through, through the scriptures, you'll find people whose countries were coming and going. Uh, that's, that's a constant. <laughs> countries come and go. Uh, God, uh, God raises up Leaders, God puts down leaders. God raises up countries, God puts down countries. Now, that's not where our faith is. Uh, our faith is in the Lord. And God will be no man's debtor. Now, let me read verse 8 again and on down through verse 11. It says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Then he gives a parenthesis. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. He's just talking about the principle of, you know, God will bless you as you give. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. I think many of you have experienced the fact that you can't outgive God. You know, as you give, God, God blesses. I think I've shared this illustration before, uh, but it, it's so much like the Macedonians and how they gave. It's a true, true story. Uh, a family in 1946, so it's been a long time ago. They'd had seven kids in the home, and uh, uh, some had grown up and were, were gone. There's only three kids in the home. The dad had died five or six years before. And uh, so they were, they were struggling. And in their church, uh, the pastor announced that for Easter, they were going to take a sacrificial offering to help a poor family. Well, they were excited about it. It was three girls and the mom. They decided if they bought 50 pounds of potatoes and lived on it for the month, they could save $20. And if they didn't run the electricity and didn't, didn't have the, uh, listen to the radio, they didn't have TV then, uh, listen to the radio, they'd, they'd save money and... Uh, different ones could get different jobs. They could make things. They, they were really excited about it. And the whole month, uh, she said, that month was one of the best of our lives. 
you know, they'd save that money, they'd count it. They were just really looking forward to being part of that, that sacrificial offering. And she said uh, the day before Easter, they went down to the shop, they got, took all their money, and they traded it in for a shiny $10 note and three $20 notes. Man, they were excited. They walked to church the next day. It was, it, it was raining, but, but they didn't care, you know. They were singing on their way, and, and when the offerings came, the mom put in the 10, and each one of the girls put in a 20, and uh, they were just so excited about what God had done. They were able to be a part of the sacrificial offering. Well, that afternoon, Sunday afternoon, the preacher came by and talked to their mom for a little while, and uh, when he left, the, their mom acted kind of strange. They said, what's, what's going on, mom? She had an envelope in her hand. She emptied it out on the table, and there was a $10 note, there was three 20s, and there were 17 $1 notes. And they realized they were the poor family that that offering had been taken for. And the girl said, it just stunned them. She didn't know they were poor. And they, they just didn't know what to think. All week, they were just kind of stunned. They didn't know what, you know, their mom said, what do you want to do? We don't know. What do poor people do with money? <laughs> Well, the next Sunday, they didn't really want to go to church, but their mom made them. And uh, they went to church, and there was a missionary there. He was saying uh, how, how they, could, uh, they needed help with uh, the church in, in Africa, and for just over $100, they could put a, ch uh, a roof on the church. They looked at each other, and the, the mom handed the envelope to the daughter, and the daughter handed it to her sister, and the sister handed it to the sister, and they put it in the offering. They were excited. And when the service got over and they counted the money, the preacher said, our church has given just over $100. To, we, they can put a roof on, on the church in Africa. And the missionary got up and said, man, you must have some rich people in your church. Just this little church and you've given so much. And they looked at each other and they realized they were the rich family in that church. That's a true story. You know, it just so reminded me of the churches of Macedonia. They were poor. They were struggling. But they had joy, and God was able to use them uh, to give. And what a blessing. Uh, there's the, the principles that God has as we give of ourselves. Uh, God will, will bless us. And you know, one of the things God does is he meets needs. Now, like I said, that's not our primary reason for giving, but God meets needs. There in verse 12, he says, For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, you know, when we give, there's, there's needs uh, that are met. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10, uh, he talks about, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. It's doing good you know, as we give, and, and it helps to meet needs. You know, when, uh, uh, when we give, uh, it's not so much that we have to uh, you know, try and work out, should I give here, should I give there? We just need to... Look for the opportunities uh, that God gives us. And make sure it brings glory to God and, and not to ourselves. That's, that's the next thing he says there is that giving will glorify God. Uh, verse 12, uh, not only supplies the, wants of the, the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Uh, whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God, for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. Now, giving will glorify God. Now, that's one of the reasons we give as a church. You know, when we give as individuals, it's going to tend to glorify individuals more. Uh, I, I've even seen groups where they, you know, they have you stand up, and I'm going to give this, and I'm going to give that. and uh, That's not really the point of, uh, of giving, is it? And uh, when, when we give... God is to get the glory. Some people thank the Lord for, when, for what our church has done. And that's a blessing. And I hope that, uh, that you're a part of that. But not only glorifies God, it unites God's people. Look at verse 13 again. While it's by the experiment of this ministration, that, that means the experience, you know, both the giving and the receiving, they glorify God for your professed subjection under the gospel of Christ. Now, they're thankful for your relationship to the Lord, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. 
Uh, that by there in, in verse 14 relates back to verse 12 uh, where he says, by many thanksgivings unto God and then by their prayers. They're thankful. Uh, they're praying. You know, it unites people. Uh, when you give, it makes you want to pray for the people you give to more. When people give to you, it makes them want to pray for you more. You know, we, we pray for our missionaries. We invest in them. We want them to succeed. And, and I hope our, our missionaries pray for us. You know, he says, by many thanksgivings, by their prayers, uh, it causes us to, to pray. And really, it all comes back to God. Verse 15, thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. You know, when you experience giving from either end, receiving or giving, it should cause you to remember that God is the great giver. You know, we, we need to learn the grace of giving. We, we can learn the grace of giving, but no matter how well and how much we give, it's just a pale imitation of God's gift, isn't it? God, God has given us His very best. And we need to realize giving will not get us into heaven. I, I think it's interesting that God doesn't say that we need to give to get to heaven. He says we need to receive to get to heaven. John 1.12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. In Acts 2, he says, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. You know, they, they received Christ. They received his word. Uh, have you received the gift of salvation? I, I hope you have tonight. If not, you can. God offers it to us for free because he paid the price. Uh, we've been blessed to be a blessing. Yeah, what, a, what a great thing that is. God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, he's, he's given so much to us. He saved us. He saved us to be a blessing. And uh, we can be a, a blessing as we share what God has given to us uh, with others. The best gift, of course, is that unspeakable gift. You know, that's just saying it's beyond words for us to be able to really to express what Jesus means to us. And we, we need to do it. We need to uh, give testimony. We need to share Christ with others. But uh, it's just more than we could, we could put into words. Uh, God's given us His Son. Uh, this evening, uh, let's, let's ask the Lord to help us uh, with our, our attitude of, of giving. It doesn't take a rich person to be a giver. It just takes a person whose heart is, is right with God. Let's go to the, to the Lord in, in prayer. Then we're going to close with a, a song. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. Uh, Lord, we don't understand everything about life and eternity. And, uh, Lord, we're so grateful that you do and that you uh, teach us the truth and you help us. And Lord, help us with this truth of giving. Help us not to resent uh, the lacks of things that we have. Lord, help us not to uh, resent others who have more. Lord, help us to be thankful. Help us to have a grateful heart for what you've given to us. And Lord, help us to use it for you. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that we would keep our eyes on eternity. Help us to look for, uh, for heaven's door. And uh, Lord, to be grateful that we can know that uh, we're saved. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.